Ardu Kim just sent me this, a new camera module for the Raspberry Pi with built-in autofocus. With other Pi cameras, you sometimes have to manually focus before taking a picture or video, and that gets old fast. With this camera, it'll autofocus for you whether you have something close up or something far away. This is big. Well, actually it's kind of small, but it's big news because up until now, most of the autofocus solutions for Pi cameras involved building complicated motorized mounts like this one for the HQ camera. For years, smartphones have had autofocus on their tiny cameras, and it looks like Arducam finally cracked that nut for the embedded community. Hardware-wise, this little camera packs in a 16 megapixel Sony IMX519 image sensor, the same one used on the OnePlus 6 smartphone. Quality-wise, it's a good step up from the Pi Camera V2 that's the same price and size, and a little worse than the HQ camera module. Although, I should remind you that that camera costs twice as much and requires an additional C-mount lens. The fixed 4.28mm lens is like a 25mm wide angle on a full-frame camera, and that's pretty close to the Pi Camera V2's viewing angle. Of course, on the HQ camera, you can put on different lenses, so the aperture and viewing angle aren't fixed, but those lenses do add cost and bulk. You can swap out a Pi camera for an Arducam in most existing cases, but the little extra bulk on the front for autofocus might get in the way for some enclosures. It includes its own protective case, though, with a built-in tripod mount on the back. That's a weird mounting point, and the screw hole's also a little shallow, so it might not work with every tripod, but it is nice that they included a case. Video capabilities between the Pi cameras and the Articam are similar, with all cameras offering 1080p at 30 frames per second and 720p at 60. I haven't done any testing on how high a frame rate you can get at lower resolutions, but according to one poster on Hacker News, the camera is capable of 120 frames per second at 480p. But the built-in autofocus is what really sets apart the Articam, and it works a lot better than I thought it would. I was expecting a focus hunting nightmare like what I remember with old SLRs, but instead, the Pi seemed to snap into focus pretty quick, with minimal hunting, at least in well-lit environments. And for video too, you can set the camera to autofocus at the beginning of the video, and it does that just as fast. But one thing that's not available yet is full-time automatic autofocus. Right now, autofocus is a one-time thing, at least in terms of practical use. You fire off a picture or start recording, and it'll autofocus once at the beginning. Articam provides a Python script to adjust focus on the camera, but that's mostly a tech demo right now. It isn't completely integrated with video for Linux yet. You can at least refocus while recording a video or taking a still using the terminal, but it's a little bit clunky. It's definitely not the same experience you get plugging in something like a USB webcam that just starts focusing automatically on its own. But the hardware is there. It's the software side that's lacking. Hopefully it's only a matter of time until Lib Camera and Video for Linux work with Arducam right out of the box. But even with the piecemeal beta software available before the camera's even for sale, this camera's a breath of fresh air if you use a lot of Pi cameras in a lot of different situations. Just the fact that I don't have to carry around one of these silly refocusing tools to switch from up close to distant subjects with the Pi V2 camera makes it worth it for me and a price of 25 bucks would be a bargain compared to the V2 Pi camera as long as image quality is on par or better. For a good test shot, I set up all three current generation cameras, the Pi Camera V2, the HQ camera, and the Articam, and I aimed them at my Raspberry Pi mug and a few other objects. I shot from the same angle with the exact same lighting conditions and only tweaked the shutter speed slightly to account for the different apertures. And you can see that the colors on the HQ camera are much more vibrant and closer to reality than the other two. The larger sensor area gives each pixel more color data, so it can really absorb those vibrant reds and greens. The Articam seems to be closer to the colors from the Pi Camera V2, though it doesn't have the same artifacting on the edges. And looking at a close-up, you can see a lot more fine detail that's just lost with the 8 megapixel V2 camera. And the extra resolution even helps the Articam edge out the HQ camera slightly if you just need clarity. Speaking of clarity, both Raspberry Pi cameras also seem to over-sharpen things. Notice the edges of the white Raspberry on the mug. The real mug blends from white to red like the Articam shows. The HQ camera and the Pi Camera V2 both have a little bit of fringing that can make pictures feel a little more muddy. For the HQ camera, that can be fixed to some extent with a more expensive lens. In these tests, I was using the recommended but okay quality wide-angle lens. In terms of colors, though, the HQ camera is the clear winner. But in terms of overall sharpness and quality, 
The Articam wins for me. The video quality isn't bad, it's not incredible, and you're still going to bump into limitations with the Pi hardware more than the camera, but the main difference between this camera and the HQ camera is a little less dynamic range. I had to reduce the exposure gain a tiny bit so my face wasn't washed out, but doing that also makes the dark shirt I'm wearing turn practically black. And using autofocus in video is a little weird. On the Pi, I have to manually press F, then enter, and it'll refocus. Hopefully the software side will improve to make using the ArduCam for things like a webcam easier. Now that I've had some time to test it, I also want to highlight some problems I had. First, because it's so new, tools like Video for Linux don't work with the camera out of the box the same way as with other cameras. I had to specify a subdevice to be able to control the focus absolute property if I wanted to set focus manually. And until their work is merged upstream into LibCamera, you have to uninstall Raspberry Pi's built-in version and install a fork of it from ArduCam. Worse still, the early dev release I'm using doesn't work with Pi cameras, so it's an either-or thing. I had to use two different Pi OS installs to test all these cameras, one for the Pi cameras and another for Articam. For camera quality, I was mostly happy, though it's not a match for the bigger sensor in the HQ camera. And if you're looking for flexibility, the HQ camera's C-mount lets you mount different lenses to it. And the key feature, autofocus, might not be as good as you're used to, even if you're used to things like cheap mirrorless cameras. If you want face or IAF, or any control at all over the focus area, that's just not a thing on this camera. At least not yet. Autofocus uses a small center focus area, and that's it. So if you want to focus on something outside the center of the frame, you'll have to focus manually. Software updates might make things easier in the future, especially once it's more integrated into video for Linux and LibCamera, but for now, don't expect the moon. I also checked, and right now, since the camera's so new, I couldn't get it to work with Show Me Webcam or my own UVC gadget script, so I can't use it as a USB webcam yet. So would I recommend the camera? Well, if you don't need the quality or versatility of the high-quality camera, then for almost anything else, the new 16-megapixel ArduCam is better than the Pi Camera V2, at least in terms of features and image quality. As things stand right now, it's not a proper replacement in every case because of the software support, but once that's sorted, there aren't many times I'd prefer to have a camera that doesn't have autofocus. And at 25 bucks, even if you're on the fence, the price makes it almost an impulse buy. If you're like me and you already have a box or drawer full of Pi cameras, cables, and hopes and dreams, why not toss in another one? Maybe you'll finally work on that cool Pi Vision project you've been putting off. <laughs> Who am I kidding? You and I both know that's not going to happen. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling. If you're still watching this, you're one of the few who don't drop off when I start my whole until next time spiel. I just wanted to say thanks for watching, and thanks especially to all the people who scroll by on the left side of the screen at the end of my videos. It's incredible being able to work on these videos, my open source projects, and my books, and it wouldn't be possible without your support. If you're able, please consider sponsoring my work on Patreon or GitHub sponsors. There are links in the description below.